Hello 3E and welcome to Purchasing Power. What is meant by purchasing power? Well, that's our goal today. I know what is meant by purchasing power and I understand how my purchasing power may change. So we're going to talk a little bit about purchasing power and then you're going to go through some investigations in the textbook um, to figure out how you can change your purchasing power if you need to. So purchasing power is the financial ability to make non-essential purchases. Okay, so um, the, the ability to step up and get something better or something that you want rather than you need. So let's think about this one. Who has the greater purchasing power? Uh, Jenny and Charlie both work at the same job making $3,800 a month. Jenny's rent is $520 a month and Charlie's rent is $730 a month. Okay, rent is essential. Um, so we've got Jenny who's at $520 a month and we've got Charlie who's at $730 a month both essential expenses. They both have the same amount coming in. Obviously Jenny's got a little bit more money to play with because her rent's not as expensive as Charlie's. So you can say Jenny has more money to play with since her rent is cheaper. Now Jenny may have some other essential expenses, we don't know a whole lot, but we do know um, from the information that we're given that Jenny has a little bit of extra cash lying around even though she's got the same job. Okay, what kind of things affect purchasing powers? Well, I've got a bunch of bulleted points here, we're going to pull them out. Here's the kind of things that affect purchasing powers. Buying things on sale. If you wait for things to come on sale, you can buy more of them because you're not paying as much. Um, here's another thing that could affect purchasing power. Getting cheaper accommodations. You could go and find an apartment for less money. Or sometimes you could actually buy a house and take out a mortgage and the, the uh, monthly payments is less than the rent. We could get a roommate and share expenses. That's a big one. Uh, if you are alone or um, you don't have a family, you could think of taking in someone else who is alone and not have a family, and then you share expenses. You could try and get a better paying job. Uh, that's a toughie, but you could. You could get a better paying job or a second job to increase your purchasing power because now you have more money coming in. And the last one that I have here, but you might be able to think of more, is reevaluate what you feel to be essential expenses. Uh, if you want to buy um, a big screen TV, maybe you don't need as big a texting plan on your cell phone or something along those lines. You need to reevaluate what you feel are essential and what you're paying for them. Um, so those are some things you could do. You might be able to think of others. We're going to look at an example and this is an example out of the textbook and then you're going to carry on uh, talking about Josephine in the textbook. So Josephine works as a sales clerk at a hardware store. It is close to the apartment that she shares with a friend. She has an hourly rate of 725, six six hour shifts a week, one on the weekend, no benefits, and deductions for income tax. So calculate Josephine's weekly pay. Now as we talked before she's got six six hour shift a week and one on the weekend generally means and we talked about this on other things that she's likely paid overtime at double time. At least that's the way we're going to take this question to be. So calculate Josephine's weekly pay so she works five shifts during the week at 725. So during the week she has five shifts that are six hours each and she gets 725 per hour. So 30 times 725, 30 times 725 is 217.50. Now the weekend pay, she has one six hour shift and she's going to make double time, so 725 doubled times two. 
So basically it's going to be 1450 times 6. Uh, or I could just type this all in. Uh, 1 times 6 is just 6 and then 6 times 725 which is uh, and then times 2 which is 87. So her weekly pay in total she's got the five shifts during the week and the one shift on the weekend so 217.50 plus 87 217.50 is 304.50 there's her weekly pay you gotta remember how to calculate these I know that was last unit but we're still gonna be using these calculate her net weekly pay. Well, her net weekly pay we got to take off deductions. So she's got 2350, 578 and 833. So we want to figure out what her deductions are. Whoop. I want this here. Total deductions. is going to be uh, 3770 for her total deductions and then her net pay remember we need her gross pay which in this case is 30450 subtract her deductions 3770 so that is I'm just going to move that down so we have a little bit more room um <clears throat> 30450 minus 3770 is 266.80. Okay, calculate her net monthly pay. Now, weekly to monthly is kind of uh, difficult. Well, it's not difficult. Um, but it's much easier to go to yearly and then back to monthly because that's a set number of days. So to get a monthly pay from a weekly pay, um, this is what we're going to do. To get the monthly pay, we take the weekly, times it by 52, which gives us the pay for the whole year. And then if you have the pay for the whole year to get the pay for a month, we divide by 12. So you're going to take her um, weekly net pay, which is 266.80, times by 52 and divide by 12. So times by 52, that's how much she makes a year, which isn't much, uh, divided by 12. So her monthly pay is $1,156.13. $1,156. And 13 cents. Okay, let's see. What does she have for purchasing power? Here's her current monthly living expenses. She's got uh, rent and utilities is $420. Her phone is $19. Her cable is $22. Her groceries are $150. Her credit card payment is $250. And the credit card payment consists of a lot of stuff in there. You'll have clothing and entertainment would be stuff that are on credit cards. So those could be essential as well, although entertainment isn't exactly essential. Uh, and medical could be um, could be prescriptions, could be visit to the chiropractor, um, that kind of thing. So what are her total monthly living expenses? Well, we have to add all of these up. So what are they? I added them all up, I get $889. So how much does she have left at the end of the month? Well, if she's got all of these and she hasn't spent anything else, um, we just need to take her monthly. So the amount left is going to be net pay minus expenses. And in this case, our net pay was 11.56.13 minus 889 which is 267.13 now that is not a whole lot at the end of the month 
Um, so what can she do with this? Well, she can buy some of those extra uh, expenses and stuff that she needs, but or she can put some away. Um, you're going to follow Josephine through a bunch of different decisions in the textbook. Um, start we began it, you're going to finish it if you look at page 39, number 3 to 16. So you're going to go through step by step what she's going to decide. Maybe she needs to give up her cable. Maybe she needs to look at getting a different phone. Maybe her rent and utilities, does it say she shares the place? What did we look way back up there? Um, she shares it with a friend already. So she's already shared it with a friend, but if they brought a third person in, um, if there was room for a third person, they could do, decrease the rent even more. Um, so I want you to go through this series of exercises out of the textbook and see if you can make some decisions with Josephine on how she can increase or get more out of her pay. Uh, and that is purchasing power.